Hi everyone, this is Rue on Paper and I'm back today with something really, really cool. Look what came in the mail! Well, it actually came three weeks ago and um, <laughs> I just put my pun back in this uh, little box like two minutes ago <laughs> because I've been writing with it for two weeks. But this is a Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore. Uh, it is one of the fountain pen models, the Furore, and it's a cigar-shaped pen, which is not really the style of pen that most known for. I feel like they're Momento Magico, um, what's the other one called? Momento Zero. Like those are more the the pen designs that Leonardo is known for. But the furore is, I think it's beautiful and it came in this gorgeous sleeve. It's a cardstock sleeve. In it, there's a box. And in the box, there's another box. So we've got a whole lot of packaging going on. And then you've got this very beautiful box. And it, it's actually like, it's a really strong box as well. Like it's very sturdy comes with the international guarantee and I ordered mine from Ackermann which is what it says in the back and then here's the pen it is lying on its soft little bed the only thing that's missing is like a tiny blanket and a tiny teddy bear but this looks so comfortable and the color I got is the white salt color now this is a stunner of a pan, I think. It has this sort of almost marble pattern. It It's funny because when I bought this, I think the day after or around, like when I ordered this, SD, Estabrook announced their SD, uh, what's it called? Something with winter or snow. Anyway, the white, the white Estabrook SD. And it reminds me kind of of this of this um, of this look, and this was exactly this is exactly what I was looking for. I looked at a lot, oh, almost dropped it, <laughs> at a lot of white pens before I made the decision to buy this one, and I wanted a white pen because I feel like white, especially the combination of white with a silver trim, goes with almost every ink color. I'm someone who likes to match pen and ink together and I don't mind a good contrast as long as it makes for sort of a pretty combination but I don't really see myself like for example putting a bright orange ink in a bright pink pen or something like that. Um, but this goes with almost everything I think. Obviously I don't really see myself writing with white ink, but it goes so well with a lot of colors. Um, I got it in extra fine. It's a beautiful, I think it's a number six size nib. And I hope you can see the gorgeous engraving on the nib. Come on camera, focus. I knew you can do it. There we go. So it's a really, uh, really nice nib. It comes with a converter. And the interesting thing, um, the resin itself, the pen is very light. That's obviously, um, that's most of the time that's the case with a resin pen like this. However, the pen is actually, for a resin pen, it's quite heavy when you use it. And that is because of the converter. The converter contains quite a bit of metal, which kind of gives the pen a nice weight in the hand. It's not heavy. It's not heavy to the point where it's tiring to use the pen. Um, but it just feels a bit nicer, I think, than an extremely light pen. It's a very well secured converter. It's a proprietary converter from Leonardo. And I have currently inked this up um, with Dominant Industry Lake, 
which is a beautiful teal color. So we're going to do a bit of a writing example. Uh, however, first I want to compare the size of the pen to some of the other pens that you may have or may have seen. This is the Pilot Metropolitan. It's quite a bit shorter and thinner than the Leonardo Furore. Then we have the, a Twisby uh, Eco. Capped, it's obviously a bit shorter, but you know, with the cigar shaped hands, they tend to be a little bit longer. We'll take a look at them uncapped as well. And then there's the uh, Lamy All Star, same size as the Lamy Safari. So when we uncap all of these, You see that in terms of length, they are more or less the same size. You won't really notice the difference when holding these pens. Can you post it? You definitely can. I. Personally, wouldn't use this one post because it backweights the pen quite a bit. I feel like it's too long when you hold it like this and it's too heavy in the back. It does fit quite comfortably. You do feel sort of the screw threads scraping against the metal piece, the metal ring in the back. Um, I don't think this is a pen that's really intended to be posted, but it's it's quite secure. You can definitely do it if, if that's what you like. I think it's a very comfortable pen. It has a slightly tapered grip section without being, like it's obviously not a molded grip section such as the Lamy Safari has, um, but it's not not completely flat either. Obviously there's quite a big step um, at this ring section, but it's quite far down. I don't really, it's not, it's, an, it's, um, it's not an obstacle for my fingers in any kind of way, the way I hold my pen at least. And it fits nicely in my hand. It's a really, really comfortable pen to write longer, longer pieces with. So if we do a bit of a writing sample, I'll bring you in just a bit closer. There we go. So this is the that was a bit of a hard start, I think, because I just left it here uncapped for a bit. It's an extra fine nib, but it is wonderfully smooth right out of the box. It writes extremely well. Um, it's, I think it's a really, really wonderfully smooth, a well-tuned nib. So I'm sure that uh, I'll have a great time writing, journaling with this pen, using it in my, in my notebooks and planners. If you were looking to 
buy a furore yourself there's obviously the white one that i have but there's also different colors i think especially the i think it's called zenzero the sort of reddish orange one that is absolutely gorgeous um, but i really really think this is a gorgeous white color i was specifically looking for a pan that has this sort of almost broken shattered look to it where it's like you're looking at the inside of it it kind of has that same look of when you look at an amethyst crystal except it's it has no color but i feel like a lot of bands are when they are white they are very even either they are very polished shiny and sort of not translucent at all a bit like like the the plastic on this one it's just it's just completely white and i think that's just a bit boring and other times they do have that transparent look but without any sort of pattern to it for example the sailor harvest moon i think it's called the megetsu that is a gorgeous pen but it it just doesn't have this sort of interesting pattern to it, which is what I like so much about this pen. Um, so that felt like a bit of an unstructured look at this pen. <laughs> if there's anything you would like to know about it, please uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I was just really excited to show this to you. Look, it also has that kind of little... Wait, let me focus. It has a little wheel that a lot of Italian pans are known for. It has a little wheel, little wheel on the clip that helps, you know, slide it onto a paper or a pocket. So that's it. Thank you a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Leonardo Furore in white salt and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.